So at this point, we've gone through a number of application problems. So hopefully you've learned how to illustrate various problems, recognize what situation you're dealing with, and then either use what is appropriate, either the law of sines or the law of cosines. So what we're gonna do now is step away from the application problems and revisit the ambiguous case, which is side, side, angle, and for that particular case, you need to use the law of sines, okay? With the ambiguous case, either zero triangles can result, one triangle, or two triangles, okay? So we're gonna go through the three scenarios. So at the bottom of page six, we're going to solve side, side, angle triangles, the ambiguous case, okay? So in example eight, it says solve the triangle round to two places after the decimal point if necessary, okay? So all we're told is that for this triangle, side length A is three, side length B is seven, and then angle A measures 70 degrees. That's all you have to go on. If you scroll to the bottom, I have blanks that we can fill in. Notice the stuff in red is what we need to find. Okay, so we know, I can go ahead and fill in that angle A is 70 degrees. We know side length A is three, side length B is seven. We need to find angle B, angle C, and side length C, okay? You should draw a sketch, even though this is not a word problem, it will really help you, okay? So I'm just gonna draw some random triangle. Um, I'll start with angle A here. I'm just gonna eyeball 70 degrees. Okay, so let's say that's the base of the triangle, and then this will be angle A, and so it's going to be about 70 degrees, so maybe something like this. Okay, so this will be 70 degrees. This is angle A, and then I'll go ahead and draw the last side of the triangle. Okay, um, it doesn't matter what I label as angle B or angle C. I'm just going to put them on there. I know if I go across from angle A, this has to be side length A, which needs to be 3, and then whatever angle B is, I need to go across from it, and this is gonna be side length B, this should measure seven, and then whatever angle C is, if I go across from it, this should be side length C, okay? So I am trying to compute this guy, this guy, and this guy, okay? All right, um, looking at this, what do we know? Okay, well, we are given, let's see here, um, we have an angle, and then the side next to it, and then the side next to it, okay? So this is our favorite case, okay? Um, but again, we usually reverse it, so we don't do wordy dirties. We are given a side, and then another side next to it, and then the angle next to that, okay? So this is gonna be the side-side angle case. This is the ambiguous case, okay? For side-side angle, you need to use the law of sines. All right, so, what are we going to use? Are we going to use the stuff about angles A and B or B and C or A and C? Okay, well, we're definitely going to use the angle A stuff, okay, because we know everything about A. We know angle A, we know side length A, okay? So let's start by doing this, okay? Sine of A over A, because we know angle A and side length A, okay? And then we're going to have to put some fraction over here. We know the side length B, but we don't know angle B. So let's go with the B stuff. We don't know anything about angle C, okay? And we don't know side length C. So we're not gonna go with the C stuff right now because that would be two unknowns. Um, so we're gonna go with the, the B information because again, I know side length B, I don't know angle B. So that will leave me with one unknown in the problem and I'll be able to solve for angle B. All right, so let's pop into this. This is gonna tell me that the sine of angle A, which is 70 degrees, over side length A, which is three, has to equal the sine of angle B, whatever that is, over side length B, which is seven, okay? Again, this leaves us with one unknown. We can solve for angle B. Anytime we have one fraction equal to another, we need to cross multiply, okay? So this times this has to equal this times this. This is gonna tell us that three times the sine of angle B has to equal, hang on, let me rewrite that. 
Okay, so three times the sine of angle B has to equal seven times the sine of 70 degrees. Okay, we are after angle B, it's trapped by the sine, so we need to isolate the quantity, the sine of B. We're gonna divide both sides by three. Okay, so the sine of B is gonna be equal to this quantity on the right. Okay, on the left, the threes will cancel. We need to go to our calculator and do the sine of 70 degrees divided by three, and that will give us the sine value for angle B. Okay, so let's do this. We're gonna go to our calculator, make sure you're in degrees, seven times the sine of 70 degrees divided by three. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and write this decimal down. So 2.19, whoops, let me make this a little bigger. Okay, so 2.19261611115. Okay, you need the full decimal expansion for accuracy. Okay, at this point, you want to free the B. You want to know the measure of angle B. So since B is trapped by the sine, you're going to have to undo that with a sine inverse. Okay, so you're gonna have to take the sine inverse of both sides, okay? So on the left, we're gonna have sine inverse of the sine of B is equal to the sine inverse of this decimal, and I'm not gonna fit it all in here, so I'm just gonna put dot, dot, dot. You've gotta carry the decimal expansion here. On the left, sine inverse and sine cancel, okay? So B, angle B, is equal to the sine inverse of this long decimal. Okay, so we're going to go to our calculator and we're going to pop this in and see what we get for angle B. Okay, so we already have this decimal expansion in here. So we just need to make sure our calculator is in degrees. We're going to do the sine inverse, either retype the decimal or just call up the previous answer. And oh my goodness, we get an error. Okay, and you can see this is a domain error. Okay, and that makes sense because look what you're plugging in to sine inverse. You're plugging in a number bigger than one. Okay, remember the domain of sine inverse, you can only plug in numbers between negative one and positive one, including negative one and positive one. 2.19 blah, blah, blah is bigger than one. So the domain error could have been expected, okay? So what this tells us, we got a big error and I'm gonna write that on here. When we try to calculate this, we get error. Okay, so we were trying to calculate angle B, but it wasn't possible because we ran into this error. So what we can conclude here is that no such triangle exists. Okay, so with this configuration, okay, if you've got an angle of 70 degrees, the side across from it measures three units, and then you know one of the other sides to be seven units, that can't happen, okay? If you go over to page nine, I believe it is, I drew this triangle to scale, okay? So here it is drawn to scale, and you can see what happens, okay? I've got angle A of 70 degrees here, I've got a side length of B equals seven, and then a side length of A equals three. Um, this side right here, doesn't have an exact length on it. It's just kind of my horizontal as my starting place. Um, but you can see based on this configuration, okay, you can't make a triangle. If you tried to connect to make a third side, you lose the 70 degree angle, okay? So this will kind of show you, you know, since it's drawn to scale, that no triangle is possible.